Brian. Yeah, good morning. This new flagship location is great. Been here a couple of times since it opened up, Pat, and it's got that kind of, not only that new smell, but it really has that kind of new, growing, exciting, transformational company that is IBM. I mean, we saw a few years ago, Arvin came in, said it's yeah. gonna be about hybrid cloud, it's gonna be about AI. We're seeing it start to kind of, you know, transcend, transform this business, this industry. Uh, and it's been exciting, so it's good to be here. And yes, Pat, um, you are an old historic <laughs> product guy. How are you, Ross? I'm great, Patrick, thank you very much. Thanks for coming on the show again. Absolutely, I'm excited to be here. A lot of uh, innovation and effort by my team went over many years yes. to get to this day. And so that's why it's so exciting for all of us and what we're about to unveil for our clients. For sure. With Z17, there's a lot happening, but let's take a little walk down history, a walk down memory lane. You know, you've been here for several Z launches now. Mainframe still are something like 70% of all the transactions, um, you know, in, in, the, in the world right now. Talk a little bit about the history, the build up to Z17. Well, I, I'm not gonna go back all the way in history. Come on, come on, start with one. But I just, th <laughs> we, have but an I, hour. we have an hour. I just think so. that, you know, if you just look at the past five years, right, 15 and 16 here, the world has changed, right? The pandemic changed things, but digital transformation is what really changed businesses and consumers, you know, I would say experiences, right? And now we've got AI on the scene. And so we've just, we've been putting out mainframes that have really met our clients' needs. They need super secure, super scalable transaction and data systems. I mean, it's just that basic. Super secure being very important, right? Powerful, scalable, yeah. able to take, you know, stock market spikes or, Black Fridays that occur on Thursday in the wrong month or whatever, right? So the idea that we're building these systems to, to suit our customers' needs, the banking needs, the insurance needs, retailers, airline reservation systems, governments, central banks, we've been meeting their needs. But what to me has really changed is this digital re revolution, this digital transformation, this driving up of transactions has really allowed the mainframe to flourish and now with AI, I think it's a real game changer. Yeah, I mean, I think we first met it, it Z14, Z13, I, I forget the exact time. You know, sometimes, you know, you can uh, 40, 50 ma years manage, manage time with uh, Z launches here. But um, at your investor day, you talked a lot about the design principles and the success of Z16. Yeah. And it is funny, you know, probably five, I mean, actually not five years ago, there was always this, we're gonna replace the mainframe mm -hmm. thing, okay? But can you talk about the design principles that go into it that really explains its longevity of, of, of value? You talked a little bit about um, uh, two or three things, so maybe do the double click on that. Sure, I, I think that, so the basics are high performance and high scale because these workloads are incredible. I mean, you think about a credit card company or a bank, bank payment system, they could be doing 20, 30, 40, 50,000 transactions per sec. It's a lot of people right. you know, doing, a, doing a lot of shopping or whatever they're doing, right? But these transaction rates are real and are sustained. We have many banks that do well over a billion transactions a day in 24 wow. hours. So scalability and performance is key. What's the next thing? Security. Keep the data secure. Keep the system secure, right? right? Keep everything about it secure. I mean, it's the country's economy flowing through our systems, not just our country, right. many countries around the world. Their economies are flowing through our systems. Have to keep it secure. Those are like table stakes. High availability. I mean, things happen. There are power outages. There are natural disasters. People make mistakes. I mean, all kinds of things happen systems have to keep running so high availability is key what we've what we've now moved into though in in my sense is some of these illities um, are really coming to the forefront and so with the notion that ai has come out that to me is creating this ability to take all this data that's captured by, through all this transaction processing and do things with it that couldn't be done before. That's the difference. And I think Z16, you mentioned Investor Day. I'm glad you went to Investor Day. I'm glad that Arvin highlighted Z16. Uh, it is the most successful program in, in IBM's history from a, from a mainframe point of view. Glad to be a part of that. 
glad that our clients were so thrilled that they're expanding their capabilities. And what's changed? I mean, the cloud's been around for more than a decade now. And as you said, people have been kind of writing off the mainframe for a couple decades now, right? And who would have thought that in the era of cloud, with cloud growing like this, shouldn't mainframes just be <laughs> disappearing? Well, mainframe growth is phenomenal, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's 5X growth, right? Is, that's going on here. And it's, and it's ZOS workloads, it's Linux workloads that are growing. Again, so why? Our customers are <laughs> highly intelligent, very big corporations that again have to spend their shareholder money wisely. It's because these systems are rock solid and they do fit for purpose computing like nothing else in terms of transaction processing and data. So we're building on all those principles I talked to, the illities as you like to call them, um, injecting AI now, and I know we're going to talk a little bit more about that. To me, that's been the game changer these past three years. We kind of surprised the world that we embedded an AI inference accelerator in the microprocessor, sure. and people are like, what are we going to do with that? And then we said, well, here's what you can do with it. And now they're like, oh, I like that, and I want a lot more. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to hit you up on that in just a second. Yeah. I do want to say, having you know come to Investor Day, it was really good to see this highlighted. Both Pat and I have talked endlessly <laughs> on after various earnings about just the significant contributions that Z make every quarter, especially during launch periods. But one of the things that did change during the Z16 yeah. was you created a bit more of a longer term scalable impact to revenue where it wasn't kind of that big wave That's and then right. fall off, yeah. which has been you know transformational when you talk about a company you know, that has certain growth profile, certain profit profile, and of course, uh, the way your investors invest in the company. So that's been really, really good. Now, as you pivot to AI, you know, you sort of started teasing. Pat and I are both, you know, we both love chips. Mm -hmm. So we love the fact that you're, you're doing something there. But again, in the end, it's, it's about the use. I mean, right. we really take that's for right. granted, Ross, that um, this stuff just works all the time. I mean, when we go <laughs> swipe our car to get, put gas in the car, to buy dinner, breakfast, whatever it is, we just expect it to work. Behind the scenes, there's a lot going on there. So where does AI sort of start to create new use cases and how are your clients sort of reacting to the power of the possibility of what you can do with Z17? So let's just start with Z16 quickly because what they what we put out there was we when we launched Z16, we had about 10 use cases, right? Our clients now have identified and are using more than 250 use cases. So we had a little bit of an idea of what clients could do. They adopted the technology. Why did we have sustained growth throughout the cycle and not just a bump like, like it used to be there was a bump in the cycle? This is more demand. It's demand based. Right. It's growth based. Right. It's for higher resilience and it's for more transactions and more clients around the world. So. That's, what's, that's been part of the difference here. Now as we get into 17 and the use cases, the use cases are all over the place in terms of from healthcare to you know, banking and credit card fraud, right? There, there's a very, very wide range of use cases. Our sweet spot is banking, which is, that's, where, that's where our sweet spot is. Over 30% of the use cases are actually fraud. When you say the word fraud, it's a short five letter word. There's hundreds of different types of fraud detection that needs to go into all the business processes within a bank, within a credit card processor, a payment processor, a claims adjudicator. And so it's these use cases for fraud detection and prevention that are saving banks now hundreds of millions of dollars, right? That's across an industry. And so that to them was a big game changer. They could, they could go from doing partial fraud detection um, and maybe catching, maybe catching mm -hmm. a small percentage to doing 100% of their transactions, regardless of how high the transaction rate is, and doing a pretty good job of fraud. I mean, you know, getting maybe 85, 90, 95% of the fraud out of the system, letting those transactions run and just grabbing the ones or most of the ones that they thought were fraudulent. Now with Z17, and we'll talk a little bit about the technology, but from a use case point of view, we're allowing something called multi-model AI to occur. So you can run multiple different types of models mm -hmm. against a fraud case in a transaction and make that determination, close that window to such a small point that you know something's fraudulent or you don't because it's that gray case in the middle. 
yeah. that the banks are still toying with. So there's lots of use cases. We pick on fraud just because it's easy for everyone to understand. And again, yeah. there's a lot of demand for it. Just really quickly, um, when you talk about these fraud detection in multiple models, mm -hmm. you're, you're talking about something that happens in almost zero latency too. And I think that's really important for everyone out there to kind of understand is you're basically running multiple models against transactions so that you know that time that I accidentally clicked that wrong link and I <laughs> give right. my debit card and make a payment on that's fake right. PayPal, it's able to quickly see that this is happening. And by the way, thousands, tens of thousands per se of these types per of transactions second. are yes. happening per second and have to be detected. That's pretty, pretty big, I mean. So the new Z17 can do 450 billion inferences a day. 150 billion. So you start, just do the math and break it down. A transaction takes four to six milliseconds, right? So you have to do the full fraud and all the other processing, might be multiple reads, could be multiple writes, all within that transaction. So all of our AI inferencing has to go on within one millisecond to make that whole window. Whole, oh, there's even right? legal uh, requirements yes, there are. for that, that a lot of people just kind of paper, paper <laughs> over and availability. Yes, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I think the power of say taking, doing a machine learning inference for fraud and then backing it up with a large language model, right? An encoder mm -hmm. large language model like BERT or something like, or BERT large or Roberta, or one, of those, one of those large language models and r basically doing the fraud two different ways and then comparing the results, that's what the banks are looking for us now. We've worked with a number of enterprises around the world that have guided the requirements that drove this into Z17. And we've got over 100 clients right now waiting for us to come out with this multi-model support. Kind of getting at it, but uh, I want to ask about Z17 in the context of, of cloud, and we talked about hybrid cloud mm -hmm. and AI. Uh, I think when, you know, the, 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 m most people in tech, right, when they think of of a mainframe, they may not know its hybrid cloud uh, capabilities and really how it fits into this overall uh, uh, IBM strategy of hybrid cloud and AI. Can you do the double click on that for us? I can try. So <laughs> hybrid cloud means a couple different things. Let me just try to parse it up a little bit. So if you're, lots of people think hybrid cloud means containerized system like Kubernetes and maybe Red Hat OpenShift, right? So you have a containerized-based application development where the containers can be transported and run in different systems in different environments depending on the workload characteristics. Full player in an OpenShift world, right? So sure. the Z is a full player there. So some people, hybrid cloud means ensuring that you can share data between clouds. So we've got a whole API strategy and APIs up and down the system software stack so that you can kick off transactions, you can gather data, and you can do it in a very high speed and efficient way mm -hmm. to connect with a cloud. In fact, we've got six patterns that our clients use to connect with the hyperscalers. Make it very easy to connect with a hyperscaler to share data back and forth so that it's, it's kind of one big long processing engine, if you would, mainframe and hyperscaler working together in unison. Then some people think hybrid cloud means application development and moving into a modern application DevOps environment with a CI CD pipeline. All of that software is available for use on the mainframe where you can develop elsewhere and bring your applications in. All of that software is available. So, and then the final thing would be operations, observability, right? right? Performance management done across the enterprise's full infrastructure. Hyperscaler, public cloud, private cloud, Z cloud, right? All those things together, we have that software as well. So we participate in the hybrid cloud at all levels. And I, I went to those four kind of spaces, Patrick, because people say hybrid cloud and then their minds, they usually no, go to listen, one of them. I'm glad you did. We play in all of them. Yeah, I'm glad you did because it is the first. I usually caveat with here's my definition of it, what I mean, <laughs> but I'm glad you expanded the definition to pretty much everybody's definition of, of hybrid cloud. And I think it's still, uh, people are amazed that, that Z runs Linux, it runs containers. <laughs> and you can leverage a lot of the work that you've done throughout the enterprise uh, tra with transportability That's uh, right. in there. And that, you know, 
it. By the way, that's my definition mm -hmm. of hybrid cloud. So uh, I'm glad you hit that first. Yeah, it's, real, it, it's interesting when I started this, I kind of talked about how everything and you know how Arvin brought everything back to hybrid cloud and AI. And it's great that you kind of explained that. It's also really important to note that you've done all this with security in mind. And I think, you know, not to <laughs> circle back to that, because you sort of, you know, you were sort of made that point earlier, but I think a lot of times when people start to go, oh, you're connecting your mainframe to the cloud. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that sort of, you know, isn't that sort of breaking the whole purpose of the mainframe <laughs> kind of, and, but there's been a lot of work that's gone into building the right encryptions to being that's able right. to move data to and from. So you, what you're really doing is you're creating a modern cloud environment in many ways yes. that runs and has all the security and, and kind of uh, scalability profiles that a mainframe had, which that's is right. which is incredible. And I mean, that's why 70%, that's why people aren't moving off. And that's, that's right. why, what are they, those, those titles that they love to use in, in articles is something's like, the mainframe is dead, long live the mainframe. <laughs> like, exactly. We're in one of those. No, I've moments. seen some hyperscalers take a few runs at it and now they're all, like, all friends. They're now. all face planted. It <laughs> just doesn't, no, it does, no, I know. it does not work. <laughs> like you, you can't move off of it. Ross, we got yeah. just a minute left. Sure. You know, uh, thank you so much for spending the time and covering this with us. Um, just kind of a takeaway for everybody out in, in the audience right now is kind of what are the one or two things that you know you really think you know they should be most excited about as they look to this opportunity to move and to upgrade and to to buy advance and continue their partnership with Z. I think the the biggest thing is we, we mentioned machine learning and predictive AI, but but on this mainframe there is also going to be generative AI for assistance and assistance running agents. So think of chatbots the most of the most advanced kind. So not only will we be doing on the mainframe with its security and its robustness, right, and its RAS, traditional machine learning, but we'll be doing generative AI. Things like Watson Code Assistant, Watson X Code Assistant for Z, or now the new Watson X Assistant. A whole new way for a system program or system administrator to be able to deal with the mainframe, yep. to be able to set mm -hmm. it up through a, a fully modern interface and you know the old system programmers like me, you know, gray hair, but especially for the new generation that wants to come in, that learns differently, wants to get on board in different ways than perhaps I did in the 80s. They want to do it in a much more online, ask questions, do things manner. Um, they can do that. So I think the power of AI in generative AI, again, with, with, with assistance and agents, is going to be fully unleashed. And we've got some specialized hardware now in the mainframe to enable that at performance scale and with security. Yeah. Well, Ross, I want to thank you so much for joining us. T-shirt on. Yes. You yes. know, I he, might tell him to. I want, on. want one of these. Yeah, we're gonna we're so, gonna get one of these. You, one. you know, silicon you. nerds, right? Yes. <laughs> hey, it's good. Hardware's cool again. It is. It's great to be it in is. that so period of time. Infrastructure. Infrastructure is cool. I always thought it was. I always thought chips were cool. Just had to get the rest of the industry to come uh, yeah. come along. Well, you know, we called the semiconductors would eat the world, and here we are. Yeah. Ross Mori, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks. And thank you, everybody, for tuning into this episode of the Six Fives, and of course, all of the Six Five. We appreciate you being part of our community. We'll see you all later.